Understanding the kingdom, part number four. Look at this, Matthew chapter number six, verse number 33. Got to start right here. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all, somebody say all. all. Good job. All things, all these things will be added unto you. I'm going to read you a couple of other translations. The Amplified says it like this. But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and righteousness. And all these things are going to be given. The Geneva Bible says it like this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be ministered unto you. Passion Translation says it like this. So above all. Constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then, like this, all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. So Matthew 6, we have this priority and we have a promise. We have a priority that if we will seek the kingdom of God and righteousness, the promise is that everything else, just what, what happens? Added to you. All right, y'all got to talk back to me this morning. Trish, Trish is not here. Y'all got to make up for it. All right? If we, the priority is to seek the kingdom, the promise is everything is added unto us if we just seek the kingdom. So look at this. I'm going to give you a couple of thoughts on priorities. Number one, if you fail to plan your priorities, you are planning to fail. If you don't plan a priority, if you fail to plan, that is a plan to fail. If you want to fail, just don't plan anything. But if you want to succeed, there has to be some priorities. And Jesus gives the first priority of mankind. Uh, I was reading through some of these things and I thought these were pretty cool. It says, desires dictate our priorities. Priorities shape our choices, and our choices determine our actions. There's a difference between interest and commitment. When you're interested in something, you only do it when it's convenient. But when you're committed to something, you accept no excuses, only results. So are you just interested in the kingdom, or are you committed to the kingdom? All right, all two of you, thank you. <laughs> clarity of vision creates clarity of priorities. Jesus clears it up right out of the gate. He said, seek this, seek the kingdom and righteousness so that everything else is add, added. When your priorities are clear, this is going to be worth writing right here. When your priorities are clear, decisions are easy to make. See, decisions are only difficult when you don't have correct priorities or you don't have clear priorities. But if my priority is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else is added, my decisions become easy because if it's not in alignment with the kingdom, it's easy to say no to something that you know is not in the kingdom. Amen? All right. Let's go into this now. All right. Just a quick recap again. So let's go over these words, three words, seek, kingdom, and righteousness. He says, if I'll seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness, everything else. So here's, here it is, seek. What does it mean to seek? If I'm going to seek the kingdom of God, I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to study about it. I'm going to explore. I'm going to understand by learning. I'm going to inquire about. I'm going to pursue. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to meditate on it. If I'm really serious about seeking, this is, what, this is how I begin. This is the starting place. Now, his kingdom... His kingdom, his, his royal power, his dominion, his rule. Uh, we could say it like this. The influence of King Jesus over his territory, impacting it with his will, creating a culture that reflects his will, morals, and values. So when we're saying, I'm seeking the kingdom, basically we're saying, I'm seeking the government of God to be administered in my life. I want to be submitted 
submitted to the government of God. Righteousness, correct alignment with authority. I want to be in alignment with his way of doing things. And he promises if we do that right there, everything else is just added. So you can go through life and you can get five jobs and you can be trying to figure out, man, I'm working, I'm working 100 hours a week and I'm still not getting ahead. I'm going to tell you, you can work 200 hours a week and still not get ahead. Because it comes back to it's not how many jobs you have, it's how are you seeking the kingdom. Because he promises us this. Tell your neighbor, you don't need three jobs. You need one. <laughs> Watch this. And that one is seeking the kingdom. Seeking the kingdom of God so that he can just add. Do you want to work for it all or do you want God just to add it to me? Come on now. I want him to add. I like it when I look to my bank account and I see, oh, where'd that money come from? Huh. Wait a minute. Wait. I don't like to look at it and say, wait, all of these deductions, deductions, deductions. I don't like those. I like it when stuff is added. I like it when things are added to me, when God adds. Here's the difference between you adding something to you and God adding something to you. Alan, you like it. When you add something to you, it comes with a payment book. When God adds something to you, he just says, here it is, free and clear, no strings attached. So do you want to keep adding to yourself, or do you want God to add to you? It's not a trick question. You want God to add to you. Amen? All right, so now let's get into some new stuff. Matthew 6.33, if we take Matthew 6.33 and combine it with Romans chapter number 14, Romans chapter number 14 verse number 17 says it like this, the kingdom of God, if you want to know what the kingdom of God is about, it's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the person of the Holy Ghost. So we could say it like this, if I seek first righteousness, peace, and joy in the person of the Holy Ghost, everything else is going to be added to me. But watch this. Let's go to that next slide. What we, what, what, we, what we see is when we add these two scriptures together, the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, that's the kingdom. But Jesus said if we seek the kingdom and righteousness, everything else will be added to us. So if we just put this in series, he says, okay, I seek righteousness, peace, joy, and righteousness. Look, it starts with righteousness. The kingdom of God starts with correct alignment, righteousness. And it ends with correct alignment. So I have correct alignment. I have correct alignment. These, these, are, these are the bookends. And in the middle is peace and joy. And you know what? That's what everybody's looking for. Everybody's looking for peace in their life. Everybody's looking for joy. Everybody's trying to find something. What, what can, where can I get this peace? Where can I get this joy? Where can I get? How can I get a hold of this? Well, if I seek first the kingdom of God, which is righteousness, peace, and joy, and righteousness, everything else is added. So here's, here's, here's the order right here. I want to be, first of all, in correct alignment with God. Righteousness. That's what righteousness is. Now let's go a little bit further. I want to give you three stages of development for every believer. Every person who is following Christ, I'm going to give you five, but we're going to start with three. We'll see how far we get this morning. Stage number one is the born-again experience. This is when you discover that Christ is in you. When you believe in your heart, you confess with our, your mouth the Lord Jesus. Jesus takes up residency inside of you. This is stage one, the born-again experience. It's rare that most people get out of stage one. Do you realize you can be in church for 50 years and not get out of stage one? How do I know that? Because your mind's not been renewed. <laughs> And see, so you can't blame the devil for you not renewing your mind. You can't blame it on a devil or a demon. It's got, you got to renew your mind to the word. Now watch this. In, in, in stage number one, Christ is in me. This is the born-again experience. 
I'm a baby. Now, I'm not going to ask how many babies we have in the room. <laughs> because I don't care if you're 70 years old. If you're just born again, you're a baby. And on the flip end, you've been in church 50 years, but having your mind not renewed, and you're still in the baby zone. Tell your neighbor, you got to get out of the baby zone. You got to grow up. We have to, the body of Christ has to grow up. Now, how does the body of Christ grow up? Well, what we see between the baby and the brain is a bottle. Mm -hmm. Between the baby and the brain is a bottle. So, so now the Bible tells me in, 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 in Hebrews chapter number 5, 13, 1 Peter 2, 2, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Romans 4, 20, Romans 5. Basically, you want to go to any address in the New Testament. I picked out five or six of them for you right there to automatically go to. It, it says that the revelation of righteousness is the milk of the word of God. So if we are to grow and mature, first of all, we got to take our bottle, which is the milk of the word, which is the revelation of righteousness. If we don't get the revelation of righteousness, we're never going to even position ourselves to start having our mind renewed because what we'll do before we renew our mind, we will try to qualify ourselves with our actions to say, now I can step into something because I've been reading my Bible every day. I've been fasting every week. I've been giving my tithes, and I'm glad I'm not like these heathens in town that I see that can't even keep it together, but I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm going to, you're going to start making it all about you. And then what happens? You become self righteous instead of operating in the righteousness of God. So what happens is. In the revelation of righteousness, man, I feel the Spirit of the Lord. In the revelation of righteousness, we understand that the same way Jesus took our sin, he became sin so that we would become the righteousness of God. How did Jesus, who knew no sin, Receive the sin of humanity so that we could become the righteousness of God. Jesus had to take on sin by faith the same way we take on righteousness by faith. Oh, man, that's, that's so good right there. Jesus did it by faith, and you're going to do it by faith. So we begin to say, okay, if he says I'm righteous, then I'm righteous. Well, what about what the prophet Isaiah said, that our righteousness is filthy rags? Well, good thing I'm not operating on my righteousness. I'm operating on the finished work of Jesus Christ, who already took my sin so that I could become righteous. And if I am in him, I am the righteousness of God. Not because I did everything right, but because Jesus did everything right. So we're not righteous because we do everything right. If we're trying to do everything right and then, and then say, yes, I am righteous, we become self-righteous because we're basing it upon our works. But when we base our righteousness on the finished work of Jesus and the finished work of the cross, we can stand up and say, I'm the righteousness of God. I think nobody understood this better than the Apostle Paul. We use this example over and over again, and it's worth using. He kills Christians. He kills all of these people. But then he has a born-again experience, and a few years later, he stands before the same group of people that he killed their family and says, I've wronged no man. You talk about the audacity to stand up before a group. Some of the people, family members, you killed and said, I've wronged no man. 
Why? Because he knew that the old person was dead. And the problem is, is we have too much recollection and we have too much, uh, what is it, emphasis on the past and, and, and the fallen Adam instead of the present and the future and the resurrected Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Do we really believe what the the Bible says that the old man is dead yeah. or only when it's convenient for us. <laughs> so see, this first stage is Christ is in me. This is the born again experience. Yeah, I'm going to heaven. I can go to heaven, a baby. I can grow up here. I can grow up there. But either way, you're going to grow up. Yeah. It's going to take you a little longer up there, though. I'm not going to get into the time differences. Okay, look at this. So first stage, if I'm going to grow up, how many really want to grow up into the person that God has created you to be? If we're going to do that, the only way we're going to grow in Christ is to take our bottle. Now you may be you may be 50 years old, you may be 40 years old, but I'm telling you, you may be in church in all your life, and you may be in just saved yesterday, but I'm telling you, if you don't take your bottle, you're not going to grow. And your bottle is feeding on the revelation of righteousness. See, what happens, what happens is if we become more sin conscious, then we become righteousness conscious. Your life is moving in the direction of your thought. If I'm thinking, don't sin, don't sin, don't sin, don't sin. What happens? Ah, I sinned. Imagine. <laughs> I'm saying, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss, don't cuss. What happens? I'm, I'm cussing. <laughs> like, don't kill that person. Don't kill that person. Don't. What? I'm going to kill him. <laughs> it, it, see. <laughs> Imagine your relationship. How many married folk we got here this, this morning? All right, about half of us are married. Imagine if you spent your whole married life having this confession. Don't have an affair. 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 Don't have I'm going to tell you, you're going to have an affair. But if you spend your, see how low they man's got? But if you spend your time saying, I love this woman, I love this man, and I'm going to do everything to show and express my love, my passion, my forgiveness, my mercy, my grace. I can't be sitting here the whole time in my marriage saying, don't kill Heather, don't kill Heather, don't kill Heather, or, or Heather, please don't kill me, Heather, please don't kill me. I mean, if, if our marriage, if our natural relationship was like that, focus on don't do this, 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 how far would our relationship ever get? We would never, we would never have anything beyond a just a face value. We, there would be no depth in our relationship, and many people can't get anywhere in Christ because they're so focused on, I can't do this, and I can't do this, and I can't do this, and I can't do this. I'm here to tell you right now, what you can do is focus on, I am the righteousness of God. I'm feeding on that revelation. And my righteousness is not based upon my works, but my righteousness is based on the finished work of the cross. And he says, if we will feed on that revelation right there, it will take us out of infancy into stage number two, where we can say, okay, wait a minute, stage one, Christ is in me. Stage two, uh-oh, I'm in him. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, what can he do when I'm in him? Oh, Lord. <clears throat> stage number one, Christ is in me. Stage number two, I'm in Christ. Now, I've been feeding on that revelation of righteousness. I've been feeding. He said, the Bible, Paul calls a baby somebody who is unskilled in the revelation of righteousness. If you are unskilled in the revelation of righteousness, I'm not here to offend you this morning, but you're a baby and you got to grow up. 
If I, Michael Watkins, am unskilled in the revelation of righteousness, I can have a title, I can have a parking spot, I can have an office, I can have all the stuff, but I'm a baby leading a bunch of babies. This is applicable for all of us. If we are, and you have to ask yourself right now, Am I pleased with the revelation of righteousness that I currently possess? Am I? See, I'm, I want to challenge you. Ain't coming, you ain't coming to Northwest Christian Fellowship just to sit here and get fat. What you're doing is you're coming here to grow and mature and function as part of the body and the bride of Christ that's manifesting the kingdom of God, that's healing the sick, that's raising the dead, that's opening the blinded eyes, that's seeing what we read about in the Bible and heroes that we celebrate manifested in our own life. See, if I don't get this revelation, if I'm unskilled in the revelation of righteousness, I'm going to be a baby. And the only thing that keeps me a baby is me refusing to get myself skilled in the revelation of righteousness. I didn't read about this. I didn't get it from the internet. I didn't get it from a book. I had this right here. In a divine encounter with the Lord in heaven about three weeks ago. And I began to write down blueprints and I began to write down charts and I began to write things as fast as I could. I'm just now, four weeks later, getting to a place to where I can start mapping them out on some software. I sent some pictures to some of my pastor friends and they're like, dude, we can't follow you. Go on free form. Diagram this thing out. Map this thing out. So I've been trying to learn free form and uh, <laughs> so I can diagram this thing out so I can communicate what I know that the Lord Jesus has revealed to me because he wants his body to be at a place of maturity so that we can be Jesus to the world. First John says like this, it says, as Jesus is in the world, so are you. The same way that Jesus is, he wants his body to be. Now, some of you get offended at that. I don't know what to tell you. If you get offended at the word, just go to the word, man. Either you're going to have to keep your offense or you're going to have to say, I'm offended about something that I don't know why I'm offended about. I'm probably offended because I don't understand it. So I got to get into this word because it says he gave the fivefold ministry, apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, all of the, the fivefold ministry for the equipping of saints until we all come to that unity of faith until we all begin to walk in the same measure that Jesus Christ, the full measure of Jesus Christ. And if we, me, am not operating in the full measure of Jesus Christ, I'm still a baby. I may think I'm really deep. A lot of people want to be deep instead of disciplined. Maybe able to throw out all the Christian charismatic buzzwords. But if I'm not skilled on this revelation of righteousness, I'm going to stay at stage one, and I'm never going to get to the place to where I can even qualify to get my mind renewed. So let's talk about the mind renewal zone. The mind renewal zone begins to increase our awareness of the oneness that we have, that there's no distance, no separation. I'm in Christ. Christ is in me. We are one. In Christ, I live. In Christ, I move. In Christ, I have my being. He is in me, but yet also I am in him. I'm not being conformed to the world, but I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind then is renewed by the word of God. So my mind, my, my thoughts are coming into alignment and agreement with what his thoughts are. Now that I'm born again, I'm a new creation, a kinos creation. I got to take the bottle. Tell your neighbor, take your bottle. 
<laughs> take it. Take your bottle. Don't say, I don't need it. Just take it. Just take it. Just take it. Whether you need it or not, just take it. Take your bottle. Take your bottle. Feed off of the revelation of righteousness. 1 John 3, 7 teaches me this, that if I just practice righteousness, if I just practice, if I just practice righteousness, it says in 1 John 3, 7, if I just practice, then I'm righteous as he is righteous. That will mess with some religious mindsets right there. Get your stuff together for six months. You don't relapse in a year or so. Then we'll start seeing if you qualify. Now, man, watch this. <laughs> if I practice, if I just commit to practice, I'm practicing, rehearsing, and feeding on this revelation of righteousness. It says, I'm righteous. So now, the third place, after I start getting my mind renewed, is this place where I'm, I'm going to call the seated zone. So I'm born again, now having my mind renewed. Let's go back to number three. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So I'm born again. I'm feeding on this revelation of righteousness. I get in that zone where my mind is being renewed. Then the next place is where I'm seated with him in heavenly places. Now I start seeing from heaven's perspective. Don't you want to see from heaven's perspective into your life? I've been going, th I, I, I was going through some crazy uh, things that was creating scenarios in my mind and, you know, how, how we do that. And uh, really concerned about a couple of different things. And then um, the Lord asked me a question. He said, how does that look from you being seated with me in heavenly places? So I imagine what it was like seating with God, sitting with him. In heavenly places, looking into my life on the earth. And when I looked from that perspective, I was like, oh, dude, that's nothing. <laughs> it looks a lot different. I don't care what you're going through. It looks a lot different from the perspective of being seated with him in heavenly places. Do you want to be able to look at your life from that seat of authority? With him in heavenly places. Chad gave the story a couple of, uh, maybe a year or so ago or, or, or further. When he was, he was in Atlanta at the, at the top of that building with the restaurant on it that spins around. And he was like, dude, you could see stuff from the top of that skyscraper that I couldn't see driving down 75. Do you realize from a higher perspective you can see around corners that you can't see around when you're on the road? See, when we're seeing from a higher perspective, seated with him in heavenly places, it, it, it changes us. Because now we're seeing from heaven's perspective into the earth instead of from the earthly spectra, perspective, looking into heaven saying, God, help me. I mean, really, that, that's a good prayer to pray, though. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> By no means is that a is 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 that a prayer that's worth dim, dis, dismissing because I think a lot of times there's been many times where I didn't know what to say except God help me. Y'all acting like y'all ain't never prayed that prayer before, but I guarantee you, you prayed that prayer before more 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 than you prayed any other prayer. You might be looking all religious, like, no, yeah, Pastor, you're talking to somebody. Now you know I'm talking to you. <laughs> so we go from that born again experience to then having our mind renewed, and see, I think that's the greatest place that the body as a whole has to transition from, we have got to go from stage one to stage two. I want to show you about 15 stages is what I'm doing, but I'm trying to break this up into very small, bite-sized pieces because I want to sit here for about the next four days and talk solid to you without even taking a break. I just want to, here, God showed me this, and here it is here, and here's the other map, and here's how this, that's what I want to do. But do you know how hard it is for somebody like me with my personality to try to break this up into, into bite-sized pieces? And I want to do this in like in two 80-hour sessions. 
<laughs> and I'm having to do this in an hour, breaking it up. Okay, so then we go from that born-again experience to the mind renewal zone. Then from that mind renewal zone, we begin to operate from being seated with him in heavenly places. Yes, you are right here, but the scripture says we are seated. Not we are going to be, but we are. So you're, you're in two locations at one time, whether you, whether you understand that, whether you agree with it or not, whether you believe me or not, that's what the Bible says. So either you have to believe what the Bible says or just, you know, right out... Take your black, black Sharpie and just don't believe that scripture. <laughs> don't believe that one. I can't put this into my box about who God is. Let me give you this right here. It's about to get weird. The definition of weird is... We're about to start seeing and experiencing things that we have never seen or experienced and things that we will not be able to explain. I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And if your idea of God and the church and the whole religious system, you can explain it and you got it tidied away in this nice little neat box what you've got is you you've not got god you you've got a god that you've created that you can control that you can put in this little box but i want to tell you the real one you can't explain him you come on <laughs> i'm telling you i guarantee i guarantee if what was going on in the man I, thank you jesus if what was going on here right now was the same thing that was taking place in the throne room i guarantee you, most most would be out the door in about four seconds when 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 one of the four-faced uh, cherubims show up you know got four faces a face of a lion a face of an ox a face of an eagle and a face of a man that joker dropped down through the ceiling and turned around and began to talk i guarantee you, people be trying to cast out the evil devils it'd be like i rebuke you in the name and i'm like this guy's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, but look at his feet, man. He's got the feet of cow's hoofs. I know he's a good guy, though. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's about to get weird. There's going to be some things that are going to be so visible from the kingdom of God that are going to be manifesting in our midst that if we don't get at least to stage two, man, at least to stage two, if the body, if we can't, if we don't at least get to stage two, we're going to be running away from the weird because the weird is actually a full-blown manifestation of the kingdom of God invading our world. And if you think, I got it all figured out in my nice little neat box, what you got is you got you a God that you made in your image. Because the one that I know, man, that's the creator of everything. Dude, you didn't put him into power. You can't take him out of power. You can't. It don't matter you like it or not. He's like, hey, here's my kingdom. Here's the rules. If you want to be a part of it, I'm not bending the rules. I'm not changing the rules. You didn't vote me in. You can't vote me out. I was here before you got here. I'll be here after you leave throughout all eternity. King Jesus is going to reign. And I have just chose to make a decision whether I understand or even believe everything. Everything that's out there. I'm just saying, yes, I'm following you, Jesus. Here's my plan. I got one plan. It's follow you, Jesus, and wherever that leads, I'm good with that. But this mind renewal zone, it helps us to bring our consciousness and awareness to this place to where we see there's nothing impossible for God. He don't fit into any box that you try to put him in. You can't define him. You can't explain him. And, and, and there's going to be, I'm prophesying to you right now, there'll be things that happen to you, and you, you just be like, I don't know. All, all, all I do know is that we started the service, and three days later, nobody left. And while we were there, 
The heavens opened up and there was interaction between heaven and earth and not one person walked out of the place uh, the same way that they came in. Dude, there was blinded eyes. There was there was like arms that grew back. Uh, there were livers that grew back. There were like hearts that were refigured and reconstructed. One dude, I sat in there before my eyes. I know this lady is 58 years old, but by the time we walked out of there, she looked like she she was 18 years old. I mean, it was like there was a reversal of the effects of time. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, weird. What, what, weird? Weird? If you think that's, that's the weird, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the normal. When we, when, when we are, when we are uh, audacious enough to pray Matthew chapter number 6, the prayer of the Lord Jesus, and say, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Hey, Selah, just stop right. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven, do you realize what you start opening up in the realm of the Spirit when you start coming into agreement with the prayer of the Lord Jesus? You're asking. You're saying, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready for the weird. If you ain't ready for the weird, you better stop praying that prayer right now. And you better find you some hole to hide in somewhere because what, what's coming, what we're stepping into is going to be a, it's, it's a rim like I'm telling you, what I've saw is, is nothing like we have ever seen or known, but it's good. All I can say is it's good. I've tasted and it's good. I've seen and it's good. It's good. Because every encounter leads us into a greater revelation of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Every weird encounter, what it's going to do, it's going to bring a greater revelation. This is who Jesus Christ is. This is who he is. All right, I'm, I'm trying, girl. I'm trying. I'm trying so fast. Wait a minute, that's, that's Hudson. Okay, boy, I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay, let me fast forward. Let me get down to, okay, number, let's go to number four and five, and I'll stop. I'm, I'm, I'll pick back up next week here on, on four and five, M maybe. I'm telling you, I got like 15 of these things, and if you could see my free form, it's just, Park, is it crazy? He's over there. Park, is the free form not crazy? The free form, is it not crazy? Oh, the math. Yeah, you're going to have to have an interpreter on that. Uh huh. All right, look at this. Now, when we go through the born again experience, we have our mind renewed. After we have our mind renewed, then we start understanding I am seated with him in heavenly places. What happens is number four is the restoration zone where it says, and he restores my soul. It's Psalms 23, verse number three. He restores my soul. You are a spirit being first. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Your spirit is the life of you. Your spirit is actually what is born again according to John chapter number 3. When you are saved, your spirit, man, woman, is born again. But it says in James chapter number 1 that our soul is transformed or renewed or restored our soul is our mind our will our emotions coming back into original factory settings i want to say somebody's messed with your factory settings somebody's reprogrammed you into some wrong factory settings to try to tell you that all of this done away with your factory <laughs> Your factory settings. So this is where we come into alignment with the frequency. Uh, brother of Van Vancouver. What was his name? David? 
Linda? Is that his name? David Vancouver. When he came here 15 years ago, he, he talked about the frequency and the sound. And, and that brother messed me up because he started me in a path of, I'm like, uh-oh, I can't go back from this. <laughs> the frequency and the sound of heaven and, and how everything is a frequency and how light is a frequency. Sound is a frequency. Miracles have a frequency. Love has a frequency. Light has a frequency. Life has a frequency. Everything has a frequency. And when we begin to speak the word of God over our lives, we become a vibrational frequency or a match for the frequency of heaven. When we speak doubt and unbelief and say what the devil has said and he is saying, we become a vibrational match frequency for the demonic realm to invade our lives. I'll never forget that. And so the restoration of our soul, this vibrational frequency that brings us back into alignment with our original factory settings. Why well, if I was just to tell you that most of us have just been lied to for all of our life. And saying that, well, the power of God, all of these things, that, that was just for the first century church. That was just for... This era that was just for this time, and God don't do things like this. What if I was telling you that's a lie? And that Jesus Christ is still a Savior, that He's still a healer, that He's still a Redeemer, and what He started, He is not diminished, but He just increases in intensity and wants to increase that intensity in our lives. Now, watch this. I'm closing with this. Lord, I, mm, I'm not even road ready. Until I get to this place. A lot of people want to get saved and then want to go tell the world. Jesus is alive. This is what Jesus did. You know, when the, when the, when the demon-possessed guy came to Jesus, Jesus told the demon to leave. And, the demon, and, and, and after the demon left him, he said, Jesus, I want to go on the road with you. What did Jesus say? No, nah, you ain't going with me, buddy. You're going back home. <laughs> what was he saying? You got to grow. You got to grow before you can go. And too many people want to go without growing and wonder why they're not being successful. We have to grow, then we go. We don't just get saved and just start going. And I'm telling you, it's against the religious mindset. This is, I'm telling you, this is revelation from the Lord Jesus. We grow and then we go. Jesus didn't even come to the disciples and say, hey guys, you're 12, y'all with me, watch this, let's hit the road. He didn't even do that. He spent, he spent time with them. They were fully immersed with him, long periods of time before they ever started going out as a group. And by the time we see the, the four Gospels, dude, they'd already been hanging out for about three years. It's like 24-7 just being immersed with the Lord Jesus. And then you see all of these things just in a very short window of time at the end of that three and a half years. I got to grow. Say that. I got to grow before I can go. If I want to be effective, I got to grow, then I can go. So can I be seated long enough to grow so then I can go? So now watch this. Number five, man, this is a righteousness zone. It starts out in righteousness. It ends with righteousness. He leads me. Psalm chapter number 23. Oh, I forgot to tell you at the beginning. I'm teaching you how to transition from Psalms 23 to Psalms 24. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If you underline scriptures, or if you got your, uh, uh, an actual Bible, underline that for his name's sake. Or if you got it in your phone, highlight it for his name's sake. He does this. He leads me in, because if, by the time I get to, to, to stage number five, there's stuff that he just starts doing because his name's on you. <laughs> The stuff he just starts doing just because you got his name. 
Just because your name is, his, his name is on you. He, he told Israel, I don't know how many times, I forgot to count it so far, but I know it's a lot. He said, I'm going to deliver you because you're out here telling everybody that I'm your God, and if I don't deliver you, I'm going to look bad. So even though you're living demonic and crazy, I'm just going to do this because you've been telling everybody that I'm your God, and if I don't do this, then I'm going to look bad. <laughs> That's why everywhere you go, you better be saying, I'm a Jesus fan. I'm a Jesus follower. I want to let everybody know I am a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm following him wherever he's going. Amen. You better let that be your testimony for his name's sake. Watch this. When I bought this phone, I got this cool Apple phone. When I got this phone, I'm putting away my notes, okay? When I got this phone... I, I don't know any Apple executives. I don't know anybody at their corporate office. I don't know any of that stuff. But when I, bought, when I got this phone, you know what they did for me? They sent me this little piece of paper that said, here's a warranty. I don't know these guys, but they gave me a warranty. It said, if anything tears up on this thing within this time... Don't try to fix it yourself. I, try, I like trying to fix stuff myself. I'm really good at tearing stuff up and making it worse when I try to fix it myself. I'm real good at that. Don't try to fix it yourself. If you have a problem, send it back to us. We'll get you a new one. Now, they did that for me, and I felt so special until I realized they did that for everybody. And I started thinking, well, why did they do that? Is because they put their name on this thing. And if there's a problem with it, they want to fix it real quick because they want to preserve that name. They want to preserve that Apple name. They want to, and, and, and whenever there's an issue, you send it back to them. As long as it's in the guidelines of warnings, you ain't done something stupid to it. You can take a sledgehammer to it or a, to a t cutting torch or a saw or whatever. You know, as long as you, within reason, you send it back, they're going to give you it. Why? Because their name is on it. When I bought my Tahoe, there's things that they did that said, okay, our name's on this, we have problems, you bring it back, we're going to fix it. Why? Not because I know the people, not because there's a relationship there, but because they put their name on it, and now we're invested in this thing together. But yet, we refuse to come to the manufacturer when there's a problem. And we think that we got to fix it. And the manufacturer says, no, when there's a problem, you come to me. Because you try to fix it yourself. You don't know how this thing works, but I do because I created you. And if you'll come back to the manufacturer, I'll get whatever's out of order and I'll put it back in order. So I'll fix it. You know why? Because I got my name on you. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Right now, I just want to give you this right here. God's put his name on you. The creator of heaven and earth. The manufacturer of every solar system, every galaxy, every human being, every alien, if there's them out there. I don't know. Whatever. If it's there, he made it. And he said, come to me, all who are weary, and heavy laden, because I want to give you rest. I want you to step into that mind renewal zone. I want you to feed off of that revelation of righteousness and be the man, the woman that God created us to be.